technology ready yet. Hey, I am Chuck the Bureaucrat, and today I'm going to do something a little unusual because I'm going to introduce a proprietary product from a consulting firm that has had a huge impact on the way I think about technology. And look, I'm not shilling for these guys, but their idea is so good that it'll change the way you view the world. To get started, this particular analysis is called the Hype Cycle, and it's provided by a company called Gartner Incorporated. Gartner is the American-based consulting firm that focuses on technology. They do private consulting, and executive programs, and conferences for thousands of organizations. And the core issue that the Hype Cycle addresses is that when a new piece of technology emerges, it tends to arrive with a lot of hype. Sales teams make bold claims about the maturity of the technology, so much so that it can be hard to determine if the technology is actually commercially viable. I mean, will investments in this new technology pay off? Ever? So, Gartner provides a graphic representation of the maturity and adoption of the technology and its applications. How relevant are they to solving, like, real business problems? To oversimplify things a bit, a hype cycle captures the idea that there are two phenomena going on in the rollout of a piece of new technology. Fundamentally, there is a slow, gradual, somewhat linear progression of underlying technology that takes years to reach full capability. And simultaneously, there is an energetic, optimistic excitement that attempts to supercharge early stage adoption. From my perspective, it's this second phenomenon, the hype, that always makes that claim that technology is advancing exponentially, even though when I look at my cell phone, it seems pretty much the same as it was 15 years ago. Anyways, these two forces lead technology through essentially five phases. It all starts with an innovation trigger, where some potential technology breakthrough kicks things off. The media gets flooded with early proof-of-concept stories, and there is significant public interest. The fact of the matter is that often, at this point, there's no usable products, and in fact, it's not even clear whether the breakthrough will ever become commercially viable. And then, we quickly reach the peak of inflated expectations. Early publicity leads to a couple of success stories, but behind the scenes, there's often scores of unreported failures. This is a time when some companies are taking action, but a lot don't. Now, between you and me, I always find this phase an interesting one when it comes to government involvement. And that's because, depending on the timing, you'll see federal agencies directed to invest in these new technologies. And of course, you can speculate on why political forces may want that early investment, and you'd probably be right. The third phase is where things get entertaining. The trough of disillusionment. Public interest wanes as experiments and implementations keep failing to deliver. Companies that provide the technology either shake out or they fail altogether, and of course investments are only going to continue if the surviving providers improve their products to the satisfaction of those early adopters. And now the real worthwhile and hard work sets in as the technology climbs the slope of enlightenment. True examples of how the technology benefits organizations start to crystallize. The, the technology becomes more widely understood. Better products appear from surviving providers. This is the time when organizations should be investing in pilots, although some conservative organizations will still hang back. And then you reach the plateau of productivity. You get mainstream adoption starting to take off. The sales teams have better criteria for assessing whether a potential client is a good fit for the technology, and the technology's payoff becomes more clear to everybody. But so what? I mean, if you're my kind of bureaucrat working in the trenches with the nasty fights, this probably is above your pay grade. Except for the fact that you're going to have to live with the consequences if some over-eager executive bets heavily on some technology 
that's just reaching the peak of inflated expectations. The hype cycle is a handy analytical tool to reinforce what that eager executive may see as bureaucratic foot dragging. It's a research-backed approach that is specifically intended to reduce the risks associated with technology investments. You might not be able to stop every bad decision, but <laughs> just imagine if you could stop one. And now, if this way of thinking is useful to you, watch this video to see why the most optimal solution may not be the best one for your organization.